Mayong Adlaw, brothers and sisters of Christ. Welcome to our episode of Gaza, 21 Historical Snippets to 2021. Join me as I take you on a digital trip featuring 21 historical churches, museums, and cemeteries here in the beautiful island of Cebu. And let's take a closer look at these sacred arts and understand its meaning and purpose. And don't forget to like and follow the official page of the Archdiocese of Cebu for the 500 years of Christianity and the CSR page of Smart Communications Incorporated, Smart Communities in Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm Brother Fares, aka Brother Lacochero. Tana Ubanta. The street of Colon boasts a colorfully intricate page out of Cebuano history books. Known as the oldest and shortest national road in our country, the streets of Colon used to overflow with different shops, stalls, sidewalk vendors, people, and passenger jeepneys. It used to be a hub of prominent names in the Cebuano society such as Briones, Gantuanco, Ludo, Ralios, and Osmeña. Colon had residential homes that were so grand, this had a store, shop, or office on its ground floor while its living quarters were situated upstairs. Colon used to be the center of Cebu's economic activities. While the Colon at present is already far from its glory days, it still remains to be a very historically significant place because of some remaining buildings. Stepping into their streets is definitely like taking a look into pictures of the past. The question to ask is, could there be possibly be any experience better than these historical memories of old Colon? The answer lies in the physical hardwood floors of a 280-year-old Jesuit house in Cebu. Located between Calle Zulueta and the narrow side street of Binacayan in downtown Parian's old Chinese district is a two-story house identified as the Jesuit house of 1730. Unknown to many, this historic gem is hidden inside the Hotong hardware within the compound. A QR marker attached on the walls greets visitors. A towering fence hides the rest of the building from street view and peering eyes of passersby. The concrete enclosure rests on the original fence of coral stones described by owner Jaime C. to be even older than the Jesuit house itself. The importance of the Jesuit house as their center of presence in the Parian community alongside of the Jesuits' apostolate is primarily for evangelization. The Jesuit house is a two-story structure of cut coral stone walls to gas hardwood floors and posts and terracotta roof connected on its second floor by a walkway to a smaller house which is believed to have once functioned as the kitchen or an azotea. The second floor of the house annex is a livable place with its original wood reliefs still retained along with two gas posts and floorboards that are bridged by wooden stairs to the base of the structure. Its roofing has been replaced with more modern and durable materials of galvanized iron and its walls as well have been renovated over time. With heavy Spanish influences from the period of colonization, the main house used to be built with materials very much like those used on colonial era churches, all of which were replaced eventually. It had cut coral for its foundation, huge uncut timber for the post that served as support for a heavy terracotta roof, and big planks of tugas wood lined side by side for the flooring. It also had corbels 
that supported the ceiling. Renovations made on the house are already modernized with house divisions that weren't used in the 18th century and disjointed smaller corbels that support a ceiling that is higher than how it was originally built. Upon entering the Jesuit's house entrance door, a relief plaque bearing the date Anio 1730 is attached on the wall. It is believed that the house served as the residence of the second highest official of the Jesuit society in the Philippines and it is where other priests of the order or deacons from other provinces were received. What used to be a staircase with a new post and intricate carvings and motifs similar to the Basilica Minore del Santo Nino Monastery was replaced. It is said that the original banister and post was brought by its late owners, the family of Don Jose Alvarez, to a house that they had built in Bohol after they left the Jesuit house of 1730. The gate's lintel has monograms of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, which is why even it had been the original entryway to the property, it was closed off to the public to protect the quality of its ornamental details. The Jesuit Museum continues to house several valuable trinkets of the past, ranging from antique furniture to a supposed reproduction of an old painting of the house attached to what was believed to be a watchtower for seafaring raiders. Still a testament to the rich heritage of Cebu, the museum continues to be preserved by the family of Jaime C for its cultural value. It's open to visitors who want to appreciate the house adorned with a historically rich past. Amazing, isn't it? When travel restrictions will be relaxed soon, make sure to visit the historic museum in Parian and see for yourself its beautiful and distinct architecture integrated with sacred arts. And don't forget to take photos. Thank you very much for joining me in today's digital trip featuring the Jesuit House Museum. And before you go, make sure to download the Panel sa Pagtuo mobile app, both available in Android and iOS. This is a component of the Traveling Exhibit Project by the Archdiocese of Cebu's Commission for the Cultural Heritage of the Church, Smart Communications Incorporated, and Inupav Media, titled Panaw sa Pagtuo, The Journey of Faith at 500 Years of Christianity. Thank you very much and let's hashtag travel smart very soon. Next time, uban gihapon taha? Tana, uban ta.